Hello everybody, welcome back to another online lecture for Organic Chemistry 2 and today we will be continuing our organic chemistry lesson on alcohols. We will be discussing the properties and acidity of alcohols. So one of the things that I wanted to bring up with alcohols when we look at their properties is the fact that when we take a look at the partial negative partial positive properties associated with the O and the H in the hydroxide we can get the ability to hydrogen bond to other alcohol molecules. So hopefully you remember this. This is really a general chemistry uh, concept when we talk about intermolecular forces that are holding some of these molecules together. So you might remember one of the properties of intermolecular forces is that they will increase the boiling point. So when I have, for instance, ethane, CH3, CH3, that's just a regular alkane. And that would be a gas. Ethane is absolutely a gas at room temperature. Whereas if I take ethanol, very similar in structure, with the only exception being that I'm adding on that alcohol functional group, I am now a liquid at room temperature. And so you will find that any time hydroxyl groups are present, they would increase the boiling point of the liquids that are associated with that hydroxyl group. And so the ability for hydrogen bonding to occur is one important property that we want to consider for alcohols. They have the ability to H bond or hydrogen bond. Now, one of the main properties that we're interested in when we discuss alcohols is the premise or the idea that alcohols can be both acidic and basic. And that's going to depend on what type of medium I put them in. Now, just a reminder, that terminology is amphoteric. So when we say something is amphoteric, we're stating that it can be an acid or a base. So if I take a generalized alcohol, ROH, and with that alcohol, let's say that I want to add it to a strong acid. So if you remember, strong acids would be, the easiest strong acid to remember, would be something like HX, where I have hydroiodic, hydrobromic, something like that. We would have a halogenated acid, and those are strong acids. So if this is the case, the HX is most certainly going to be an acid in this environment, which is going to leave the alcohol to behave as a base in this particular case. And the lone pairs are drawn in here because those are really what are going to act and seek out the hydrogen, which will let go of the halogen as a good leaving group. And what we end up with is an alcohol that has now become a conjugate acid. And so this alcohol now has two hydrogens, kind of like an H3O plus, which picks up an extra hydrogen. There's a plus charge associated with that oxygen because one of its lone pairs has been donated. Remember, Lewis acids are going to accept Lewis bases, which this is a base, are going to donate. And then we would also have our X minus that would be hanging out in solution left over right so in this case now this has become an acid I'll put a C in front of it because it's really the conjugate acid and this has become the conjugate base in this case very weak conjugate base that we have over here remember strong acid leads to weak conjugates vice versa and so this has now become a conjugate acid so alcohols can act as a base alcohols can also act as an acid so if I draw another example down here, let's do ROH again. I'll go ahead and I'll include my lone pairs. Okay. And in this case, that's a bond between the oxygen and hydrogen. In this case, I'm gonna pick out a strong base. So let's say NaNH2. So the metal is really going to dissociate in solution to give NH2 with a minus. And in this case, the NH2 is going to come grab a hydrogen from the alcohol because this is absolutely a base when we take a look at that which means the alcohol is going to act as an acid 
So when I take a look at this, this base comes in, grabs the hydrogen, the electrons from the bond to the oxygen and hydrogen are going to go to the oxygen as the hydrogen is taken. And we end up with R O minus. And when we have that O minus, there's a special term for this. This is known as an alkoxide alkoxy or alkox let me fix that alkoxide alkoxide ion okay and an alkoxide ion is an excellent nucleophile so we'll go ahead and put nuke down there this is a great nucleophile for displacing other leaving groups if you ever wanted to generate some sort of a alkoxide ion and we're going to see in future chapters those are useful for certain synthetic techniques and then I would also be left with NH3 which would be ammonia gas that could bubble out a solution or whatnot uh, when I have my NH3. And that was originally from the NH2 over here. So in this case, acting as a base, in this case, acting as an acid. And we should note that in each of these cases, these are weak. So when I say these, I'm referring to the alcohols. An alcohol makes a weak base and it makes a weak acid. I need a strong base, which NaNH2 is, and a strong acid, which HCl, HBr, etc. would be. Um, and when you take a look at these, okay, they can act as an acid or a base depending on the environment that they're found in. I would not be able to do this as readily if I had a very weak acid or a weak base uh, along with my alcohol. So again, amphoteric alcohols can act as an acid or as a base. Now, the next thing we want to kind of look at here is we're going to sort of zone in and focus on the acidity of alcohols. So if I have an alcohol and I want to look at its acidity, I can increase the acidity by what is known as inductive effects. Now the term inductive effects should be familiar because we've talked about them when we talked about carbocation stability. We talked about hyperconjugation and then we also talked about inductive effects. So if I have the following two alcohols, I want you to consider this here. So one of them is going to have just regular CH3s. These are, oops, these are tertiary alcohols. The other one, that's an F there, are going to have CF3s. So we're going to have a lot of fluorines on the surrounding carbons. And then we have this here, right? So I pick out some sort of a strong base and I deprotonate. So I've got CH3, C, CH3, another CH3 at the bottom. And this is my corresponding alkoxide ion. So if I do the same thing, I expose this to a base, I'm going to end up with only difference is these are CF3s instead of CH3s. And the question that I would pose to you is, out of these two, which one is going to be more acidic? Right? So take a minute and think about inductive effects. Pause the video if you need to. And you should come up with an answer. The answer is that this one is going to be far more acidic in comparison to the other alcohol. Now, if you look at why that is the case, the CF3s, I have strong electron, and I'm going to abbreviate this here. We're going to use this term a lot throughout the Organic 2 course, electron withdrawing group. So something that likes to draw electrons towards itself, right? Here's electron property, and the electron withdrawing group is going to try to pull electrons towards itself. So if I take a look at these, what I end up with is a negative charge, and that negative charge is left on the oxygen in the alkoxide ion. So the fact that I have three groups, all of which are attempting to pull electron property towards themselves, that's actually going to help with this negative charge. Because remember, the negative charge is a buildup of excess electron property around the oxygen. And so when I have that negative buildup or that negative charge, these electron withdrawing groups, and remember that fluorine is the highest on the electronegativity table, these electron withdrawing groups are going to help basically by induction take care of or alleviate some of that negative charge that's attempting to flow this way. On the other hand, my CH3 groups okay, are not going to have the same inductive abilities. So 
when we talk about them, these CH3 groups can have some slight inductive effects when we talk about carbocations, but they're not going to be helpful in the case of the alkoxide ion. And so here we can take a look at their general pKa's when we're dealing with this. And the pKa's, remember that pKa's deal with acidity, show the vast difference. And so I have a pKa of approximately 18 when I'm dealing with this acid over here. And the pKa for the trifluoric over here is going to be approximately 5.5. It's around 5.4 5.5. So remember, lower pKa means more acidic. This is magnitudes, magnitudes, because every time I jump a pKa level, I'm dealing with a tenfold change. This is magnitudes higher than this one is over here, right? And so the inductive effects, the more that I place these electron withdrawing groups around the alkoxide ion, that's gonna be important. All right, so now we're gonna talk about phenols briefly. Remember that phenols, we're not really going to go through many reactions with them, but we are going to discuss their acidity a little bit here. When I have a phenol, which is a benzene ring with an OH group, phenols are considered to be more acidic. Now, they're still fairly weak in comparison to something like uh, HBr or HI, but these are going to be more acidic than your general ROH. Okay? And the question here is why are these considered more acidic? Well, it really comes down to the explanation of the electronics around the ring and resonance. So by definition, if I have something that is going to behave as an acid, I'll bring my NH2 in again, although I would not need a base quite so strong to deprotonate this guy right here. But nonetheless, that's what we'll use. And so what I am left with is I have this ring and the ring has an O minus charge left behind at the top. Okay. All right. So what's important about this? Well, when I take a look at this, okay, I have a benzene ring with alternating double bonds. And so I can take one of these sets of electrons, push them down to form a double bond here. And you should revisit the lecture on resonance if you're having trouble with this. And then one of the pi bonds can alternatively place a set of electrons around the ring. Okay. And so now I have a double bonded oxygen right here at the top. I'm gonna have a lone pair of electrons that create a minus charge out on this carbon right here to the left. And then I still have my other two double bonds. And so I can alternate here, right? I can turn around and say, well, let's push this back into a double bond and let's move this here. And if I do that, I again can alternate to another resonance structure. And I now have the double bond oxygen, double bond, double bond, and now the minus charge or the set of electrons is down at the bottom. And I could do it one more time, pushing them here. And then if I did that, Let's try to draw this quickly here. I have a double bond oxygen here. I've got this here, this here, and then the pair of electrons would be here. This could alternate here, and that could go back up to the oxygen, which leads us full circle back up here. Okay, So I have lots of additional resonance structures. This is not inductive effect. This is resonance, and resonance is better than inductive effect in terms of stability. So what I am doing, if you remember the sort of the magic term associated with resonance, I am delocalizing the electrons over the ring. Now something I do want to point out here uh, in terms of resonance, these are not all equal resonance contributors because these carbons holding minus charges are not going to be as stable as an oxygen holding a minus charge. So we would consider this to be the major contributor when we look at that phenoxide ion. So keep in mind, okay, phenoxide. We've had alkoxide, now we're talking about a phenoxide ion. When we go through this, this would be the major contributor right here because the minus is on the oxygen. Oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. It's better suited at hosting a negative charge. 
the negative charge can go around the other parts of the ring that still helps to delocalize which is very beneficial okay but that spreads the electrons out over the ring some more now when we continue to take a look at this all right it's important to remember that when we're going through resonance structures individual resonance structures do not exist so it's really a blend of all of these we're spreading these electrons out over all of these positions in order to create that stability so what is the definition of an acid an acid is something that will release or let go of protons in solution that's at least one definition and this will very readily let go of or get rid of its proton because there is extra resonance stability hanging around once that uh, phenoxide ion forms okay now one of the other things we can talk about is the fact that you could have electron withdrawing groups and we're gonna keep this brief so the video doesn't run too long okay and we will discuss this some more probably when we get to uh, the benzene chapter the aromatic chapter so I can have my O minus group here and if I place an electron withdrawing group here that makes it even more acidic it's even more beneficial okay so this is important a lot of teachers go over this here so in other words if I pick out a good electron withdrawing group such as an NO2 group a nitro group now there's lots of different choices that you could pick out nitrile like a C triple bond N you could have other types of electron withdrawing groups some sort of a carbonyl group like a C double bond O an aldehyde or something like that okay but if I have this minus remember that when I alternate these positions around the ring at some point one of my resonance forms I'm not going to draw through all of them again but one of my resonance forms is going to end up with the minus charge or the extra electrons right down here opposite the double bond O so if I put an electron withdrawing group right here that electron withdrawing group is helping to draw the electrons now this would be some inductive effect here but it's helping to withdraw the electrons from this resonance position down towards the nitro group so it's almost like I have resonance with the added bonus of some inductive effects of the electron withdrawing groups and this can make a big difference when I place electron withdrawing groups on the ring it can certainly increase the acidity of the ring uh, and make it more acidic so that's pretty much it alcohols are amphoteric okay which means they can be an acid or a base depending on the solution they're in we can also take a look at inductive effects of the alcohols if they're next to electron withdrawing groups we know that phenol is more acidic than the corresponding alcohols and that's due to resonance stability that we have not all of them are equal there's a major contributor that we talked about and additionally I can add electron withdrawing groups onto these rings in order to promote the acidity even further another thing to keep in mind is we talked about that hydrogen bonding hydrogen bonding is present in alcohols which leads to alcohols having relatively high boiling points in comparison to a lot of other functional groups such as ethers alkyl chlorides things like that so that's it for this lesson we're gonna wrap it up and I will see you guys in the next lesson where we will go ahead and start talking about some alcohol synthesis so I will see you guys there thanks for joining me